Three, two, one. Good evening and welcome to London Raspberry Jam. I'm sorry, I thought you'd be a little bit more excited than that. Welcome to London Raspberry Jam. That's more like it. Now, um, you'll, you'll tell very, very quickly within about two or three minutes. I'm, I'm a bit crazy in the way I think. I don't always think in straight lines. And it's possible that some of the things I've planned or talked about for this evening just might not happen because I might forget. If we leave something out or we leave somebody out or fe somebody feels they're not getting what they want, please talk to me or tweet it or email it afterwards if you're too polite and that kind of thing. This evening is just really three aims. This is, a, this is like a pilot tonight. It, this could be the last one and the first one to combine, or it could be that this is the start of many more things. So the plan is to start a London Raspberry Jam, or many London Raspberry Jams. We might even have a Northeast, a North, a Northwest. We don't know, or it could just be that we have a London Raspberry Jam that happens once a month. Another plan, aim, to network. There are loads of people in this room, lots of people who have got things that, that you need, that you want, but you don't know who they are and how to get them from them. So to the, part of this evening should be to help you. Is anybody in the room who's got a Raspberry Pi? Just say, aye. Right, hands down. You can shout, we hate Alan, but I don't want to hate anybody with Raspberry Pi. We want to send our love out to Raspberry Pi people tonight. We're sending it from London off to Cambridge. If you haven't got a Raspberry Pi, I'm just kind of, Raspberry Pi, just kind of go, ooh. Okay, so there is a bit of disquiet among some of you. So this evening's event should really help those people who haven't with those who have. Some of the people I've met have come up to me and they said, hey, hey, Alan, I've got my Raspberry Pi. Great, what have you done with it? Uh, oh, um, I've just been a bit too busy. And then I've heard other people go, what do you mean you're too busy? I've got loads of things I want to do with my Raspberry Pi and mine's not arrived. I've only just today got the email that says in three weeks time, I might be able to order it. So this is try and put the people to haves with the have nots. And then the third thing is, I'm hoping that this evening will in some way educate, entertain and inform you about the whole Raspberry Pi scene. Now, my plan is, that's the introduction. That's what this evening is all about. If you get a bit tired of listening to people talking or whatever, there's nothing wrong with going over to the bar. There's lots of little spaces, little quiet corridors and stuff like that. You can start your own little raspberry mini jam, you know, down the corridor or whatever. We've got scones that have been provided by Rosie Slosek. Sl is it Slosek or Slosek? Oh, we're getting on. It's like scones and scones and, oh, never mind. Scones, okay. Rosie's made the scones, so tonight they're called scones, okay? She can claim that. We also have some people at Mozilla to say thank you. Shout, thank you, Mozilla! Thank you, Mozilla! So we've got people like Cyberdees, or you might want to call them Dees if you don't follow him. Yeah. He's over there. We've got Ryan Watson. Ryan gives a wave. Hello, Ryan. Ryan's got lots of emails from me all about making this thing happen, but it's great. They want lots of people to use this space to make things happen. So that's why they were so keen to help this happen. Um, have I left any, oh, my crew, Leon. Leon. Leon is the guy with all the technology, he's got cameras. <laughs> Don't say anything bad about Leon, because somewhere in this room there's a camera right now directed on your face. Some of them are hidden in the roof space. This, I'm not allowed to leave because Look, apparently if I move this, oh, it works. And I move this way. And, and Neil, Neil's just been a general good guy who's sorted lots of stuff out. You can just throw stuff at, Leo, at Neil. <laughs> and, and he'll catch them and he'll fix them for you and then throw them back at you. So we have a few people who want to come and talk and they're, they're, they're not too shy about doing that. So I'm gonna mention some of the names. In a, in a, in a little while, we'll have Genevieve. Genevieve is a teacher a little bit like me, except she's got hair, okay? <laughs> and there's a few other differences which you'll spot. She's a bit more sane. Neil's gonna tell, oh sorry, Genevieve's a teacher, so she's gonna tell us a little bit about how, how she thinks Raspberry Pi could help what she's doing, but at the same time, Genevieve is organizing loads and loads of events, and there's a bit of a race going on between me and Genevieve about that's who's- so not true. <laughs> Oh, okay, that's not true. So I'm in the lead at the moment. No. <laughs> <laughs> And um, Neil, Neil w works for an organization called Young Rewired State. 
if you know somebody who's under the age of 18, you really need to get them in tune with Young Rewired State, and Neil will tell you why in a little bit. And Neil's come up with some fantastic Raspberry Pi uh, things like field servers, and that, he's going to tell us a little bit about that. Leon, were you going to do any talking tonight? Not tonight, okay. We have, we have also, we have a, some Riscos people in here. Give us a shout, Riscos people. Now, if you don't know what Riscos is, you're soon going to find out, because in a few moments they're going to give us a little bit about that and why it links in with Raspberry Pi. Um, somebody who said they don't want to speak, and I'm hoping he changes his mind, Mr. Pang, SK Pang. Brilliant guy. You probably don't, you may have never met him before. He's doing loads and loads of stuff. He's selling lots of things that, I don't know how he's making a profit, but he's got lots of little kits and gadgets and stuff that you can buy. I've just been up to him, giving him five pounds for an SD card that he's prepared for me. I've stuck it in my Raspberry Pi. I hope when I get back to the hotel it's working. I've not had a chance to test it yet. He's not selling blank SD cards. <laughs> <laughs> but he's, he's brought a light chaser kit and I expect this is going to be very popular, so in a little while you bring it over there and you can go and ask him questions. If you don't talk to anybody tonight and you walk out of the building, you're not really going to get much else to see. It's all about meeting people and talking to people. Now, um, Genevieve, were you okay to talk for a few minutes? Oh, it's me. Okay. Great. Okay. <laughs> so let's hear it for Genevieve. <laughs> Now anoint you in the way of the camera. Thank you. Hi, um, I'm Genevieve. I work at Dorothy Singer School in Brighton, and my Twitter handle is Peg Leggin, or which actually was Peg Leg Jen. Um, <clears throat> we currently don't have any Raspberry Pis, nor do we have any budget for Raspberry Pis. So we've um, kind of contacted our sort of local digital companies, and we've got somebody to donate three to us when the education kit comes out, which is rather nice. And so we're gonna be using that as like a sort of digital lab to sort of test stuff out. So we're gonna get like Xbox Connect controllers, um, sort of interface with lots of different things. So they're kind of like a working lab, like if you had a cool kind of place to work, that's what you want, that's what we're trying to get anyway in our, um, in our school. <coughs> Whether that we do is a different matter because it's all to do with money. Um, and then what um, Alan was kind of hinting at is that um, a week on Friday, um, I'm doing a hack day at my school with 250 students of year nine, which isn't all of our year group, by the way. It'd be 350 if it was one of our year groups. And is it this computer? Can I open it? Yeah. Oh, this is, oh, actually, can somebody do it for me? <laughs> oh, thank you. The joys of being one handed. Um, um, so the, um, the link to our Hack Day page, uh, which the students are doing, is www.dorothy-stringer.co.uk forward slash Hack Day. Yeah, stringer.co.uk. Like, like all schools, we don't have any school extensions, we have a company extension. Yeah, there we go. Right, so there we go. So this is um, uh, just a brief overview of our day. Um, and part of it is that the students will be building um, something. Um, so either a web app, a phone app, a website, a uh, Twitter extension, a uh, G plus extension. Um, and at the day, uh, because of some of the people I know, I've got um, Clear Left who, so there's a lot of Brighton companies if you don't know who they are. So Clear Left, got front end developer. We've got Code Club coming, um, UX designer. Um, Aral Balkan is another one who's going to do a talk on UX design. And we have AppShed releasing two um, extensions of their software. We also have um, Silvano and Lu Lewis from uh, Google offices in London coming down to do some stuff. Plus lots of other people who've got three university professors. I just kind of asked and went, can you come down? It's me, you know, disabled, please, come on. Any, anything to get anyone to come down and join it. But basically, part of the day, it will be live broadcast like we're doing this, um, using Google Air Hangouts, all being well with our bandwidth. <laughs> and um, on top of this, there's also a, um, where's this? Sorry, did you just drive? I did, yeah, sorry. <laughs> I just need you to scroll down so you can see the day. Um, so, 
Uh, part of it is that anyone can join in. Uh, there's also lots of stuff for everyone to do just within a lesson. So there's um, presentations, there's a workbook, there's PDFs, and there's also, uh, which I'm doing at the moment, an uh, iBook to go with it so that you can actually... This is just for me, trial and lots of software which I want to use with my students. And this particular site is actually being built with me and the students, and it's fully... Um, accessible to everyone, including readers. It's a liquid design, so it works on tablets all the way down to sort of any mobile device. I did get told off by a lot of UX designers, so I had to change it. <laughs> so it does actually work properly now. Um, so yeah, so uh, basically, this um, anyone can join in, and I'd like everybody to join in. That's the whole kind of purpose of it is that to create that kind of the same sort of way as Alan and all the rest of us are doing that creative global classroom. You know, nobody's the teacher, everybody's the teacher, and we're all students as well. So, and that's, so that's one of the things that I'm doing. And then um, another thing that I do is I actually teach year one and two classes how to program in Scratch, um, which is actually really, really good. And they are a lot better than most of my, my year nines. Uh, in terms of certainly having a go at failing, um, so we do that with Lego We Do, and one of the other things that we want to do is sort of expose them to the sort of Raspberry Pi, but obviously I need to learn that first, and also learn to program in Python. <laughs> so a few little learning things for me. So, um, and thank you, Alan, for letting me plug my hack deck. <laughs> so yes, yeah, so this is all me planning it on my own, and I'd like everybody to join in. So it'll all be live, and you can get it through here, and um, the hashtag is literally hashtag hack day. So nothing too exciting, but um, so and if anyone wants to do anything, if they want to do um, join in any of the hangouts and you're not here, feel free. Just let me know and we can uh, slot it in and make you a leader. And thanks very much. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, of course. Yeah, yeah. Of the, it's not part of the curriculum, is it? It's off. No, we have. Um, we're still allowed in our school to um, do <laughs> raspberry. We're still allowed in our school to do actually activities week, um, which a lot of schools aren't. Which is why I've built in the one hour thing. So they have lots of options that they can take, um, and actually most of the students wanted to do it. So therefore, we kind of made it not necessarily compulsory as such, but um, it's. The, um, it's quite unusual to get sort of um, access to 350, sorry, 250 of your students to do something off curriculum and just kind of go for it, and not really worry about anything fails, which is likely to happen. Yeah. So yeah, so we, but we do that quite often. Um, so. Please, if you have any more questions for yes, Genevieve, yes. she'll be floating around as she does with her stick. You can't <laughs> miss me with my green card. But she'll happily answer any questions. Now, yeah. um, yeah. web address. Genevieve, web address for so But you can also, if you do a search on Twitter at Peg Leggan with lots of G's in it, you can send her a message and say, Tell us again. And maybe somebody will put a, a London hash Raspberry Jam Peg Leggan site is, and then people can find out about it. Now, in a, in a couple of minutes, Neil Ford is going to demonstrate something that's very much Raspberry Jam, uh, Raspberry Pi, I'm going to have to stop doing that. Um, and Neil is demonstrating just how you use Twitter to, to share something. <laughs> so we've got hash Raspberry Jam Brighton School. Oh, Neil, you are so good. Didn't I say he was good? <laughs> Now, I'm sorry, I'm, well, uh, that's it. I'm not going to apologise. If this evening seems like there's a lot of talk about education, because the, the, the plan, the aim of the Raspberry Pi is to support education. Some people, if you go around and talk to them, say, oh, children learn in schools is boring in ICT. It's not fit for what, what they need and all this kind of thing. And Michael Gove, our lovely, lovely Secretary of State. Um, <laughs> So you're on your own, Andy. <laughs> um, oh, no, he does have a use. No, he really does have a use. Michael Gove has a use. Did you yeah. know that the Secretary of State for Education can exempt an event from CRB regulations? 
Oh, right, okay. So he's really useful if you've got lo like 500 <laughs> kids in one location <laughs> and you don't want to get everybody CRB checked. A bit like Hack to the Future, something like well, that. Well, Hack yeah. to the Future or possibly yeah. the Festival of Code for Young Rewired State. Okay. <laughs> you get him to accept the event. What We're trying to usurp each other with plugs for our own little yeah, projects. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to do that in a minute. Yeah. Yeah. Now, um, <coughs> just before Neil, do, I, I, I can do the, what's that comedian called? It does that the, and and he, he has lots of comedians on. He fills in the bits in between with stuff. Yeah, one of them. Okay. Anyway, um, so we've got teachers in schools have got about two years or so if they want to try and form and make the curriculum go in a certain direction. Like maybe it should have more about programming, maybe it should be software engineering, maybe it should be about computing science. So some teachers like myself and Genevieve are, are trying lots of different things and really wanted with Raspberry Jam to help probably where you live there's maybe a school and they're banging their heads right now saying how on earth do we get computing into the curriculum and maybe you know with Raspberry Pi how you can make that happen so I'm going to pass over to Neil now and we'll pick up on that little theme a little bit later so Neil Ford is if you're looking on Twitter he's at Neil C Ford C as in the letter C yeah thank you Alan right I'm going to talk to you about a couple of things this evening um, let me find the first bit and yeah, look, hey, Amazon wish list. I didn't bother with the presentation. <laughs> it actually doesn't work yet, but I'll explain why. Right, this came out of an event that we, uh, a number of us attended in Devon about six weeks ago, Andy? Four to six weeks, it's about that. Um, we attended a hack day for the Field Studies Council, who are the organization, they're a charity, and they run the vast majority of um, school field trips. Biology, botany, that kind of things, where the, where the school, where the kids go. And they got centres all over the country and we went to this absolutely fantastic place down in Devon. Weather was nice, yeah, food was great, beer was awesome, though I don't drink, but the beer was really good apparently. And um, we had a really good time. Now one of the problems that they have is that they've got all the kids turn up and they've all got smart devices, so they've all got their smartphones, be they, you know, Apple, Android, whatever, or they might even have iPads, and the centre has iPads. But out in the middle of a field, and I don't really do mean a field, or alternatively, knee deep in water in a river, there's no network coverage. There's nothing. No cellular, no, no, cellular, no Wi-Fi. And the question is, how can you get the kids to you be able to use their smartphones to aid the data capture that they currently do on bits of paper with pen and pencil. The portable pie came to, to, to my mind. Now, I didn't actually get a chance at the weekend to build this, because uh, I'd only got my Raspberry Pi about two days before and I hadn't got all the bits. But I've subsequently been sitting down and working out what I need and actually making some of it work and figuring out what will and will not work and stuff like that. So basically what you do, I'm going to start with, this is on a slightly bigger board because this has got a breadboard on it. Because this Where did is, you get that awesome board from, that case? Where did I get the awesome case from? Yeah. Oh yes, this is an SK Pang case. Um, <laughs> hold down, there you go, Raspberry, that's the experimenters. <laughs> oh, I'm too stupid to do that. Right, uh, here we go. SK Pang Electronics, skpang.co.uk. Here we go. Let's say skpang.co.uk. All sorts of lovely. This is part of their experimenters kit, which comes with the breadboard, the slightly larger um, board to mount it all on, some LEDs, uh, jumper leads for the GPIO, so that you can suspect it's roughly what that demonstration that is there is running on. Uh, th this is ki this is kitted up like this because this goes to my nephew at the end of next week. He's only ten and he doesn't know he's getting it yet. <laughs> so I'm uh, taking him to Coda Dojo London, and then when we get back to his house, he's going to find out he's got one of these to play with. Um, and then I'm without one until my next one arrives. Anyway, right. So you take the case, you take the raspberry pi. You need a battery. So this thing, one thousand milliamp external battery. According to the Raspberry Pi wiki, this will actually run a Raspberry Pi for 12 hours. Somebody's actually tested it. Um, and it's got standard USB outs. One is one amp and one is two amps, um, which is like, oh, fantastic. You take... Uh, 
which goes from that into the micro USB so that you've got power for your Raspberry Pi. A wireless adapter. This one um, works because I, and that actually does work. And that now works very nicely. Um, and the idea is put that all together, install a web server on it, and then install um, a web app. Now, of build log the analysis instant resource. This was one of the hacks that came out of the hack day. Um, completely independent of me thinking about how the heck do I make a portable web server that can be put in a box, stuck in a rucksack, and taken to a river. Um, this basically is an HTML5 app that would run on the server, kids would connect to it with their iPhones or their Androids or whatever, and it actually allows them to log the data that they're capturing, so river depth, flow, the width of the river, what the bottom of the river looks like, but it's also designed to um, provide answers to questions. Um, so the kids can ask, the, basically the, the, the app would have resources. Now one of the big problems, or the follow-up problems that they have at the moment, is the paper that the kids fill in, they all get back to the centre after a day in the, in the, in the great outdoors. And then one of the instructors has to spend the dinner hour, or the dinner half hour, I should say, while the kids are some food, typical you know, school dinner type food, they have to sit and type in all the results so that afterwards the kids can go into the classroom for about an hour and they can look at the results. It all gets written out to the SD card. Pull the SD card out, stick it in something else, suck the data off, and then and we'll, um, we'll skip over um, we'll skip over this one, this thing by Andy Piper and Neil. That, yeah, we won a prize for that. Uh, where's it gone? Where's it gone? Here we go. Historical data driven education. Um, basically, takes the data that Flair would generate and then allows you to map it or analyze it in you know very some very clever graphs. And they actually had a, the demonstration. And unfortunately, there is no none of these are actually live, but there is a demonstration that shows you, they took a load of river, historical river data and then mapped it. And it was great because they showed like, here's one school and this is what the bottom of the river looked like to six different sets of kids and it went all over the place. <laughs> so, one no, minute? No, oh, one minute. Oh yes. God, I knew I was on time. You should have said. Anyway, so yes, idea, take stick it in a box, make it fully portable and then use it for uh, in the field data capture. Right, I've got a minute. The other thing I want to talk to everybody about is this young rewired state yeah. right now this we this year we are taking 500 kids in 50 centers around to open data from the government and other sources and then at the end of that week so they go monday to friday and friday afternoon they come to the festival of code which if they don't charge us an arm and a leg. We found a venue for today. <laughs> We're going to go to Birmingham. It's going to be awesome. Yes, camping in the centre of Birmingham. That's going to be an oh, interesting trick, but we've got we've got a way around that, and it doesn't involve jackhammers in tarmac. Um, but basically, yeahwiredstate.org. As Alan says, if you know anybody that is between, um, well, actually under the age of eighteen, our long, young, youngest uh, participant last year was seven, um, and boy, did he tell, did he tell. Did he tear the nice man from number 10 and you asshole? But that's a whole different story. Um, basically, if you've got anybody who's a kid who you think might be interested, get them here, get them signed up. We'll add them to a centre. They'll learn to code. They can come to this massive party in Birmingham. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be food, drinks, sugary sweets, the whole shooting match. Um, and if we really, if it all comes off, and I am so crossing my fingers, one of the judges is going to be Lily Cole the supermodel and actress she's behind us 100% um, so she's going to be one of our judges that's going to be fantastic so yeah Young Rewired State 500 kids lots of hacking lots of code really is um, a big big project this is what I now spend my life doing having answered a Twitter from Hub Mum otherwise known as Emma Mulqueenie and going yeah I've got some free time Emma I'll give you a hand <laughs> in February I am now literally 24-7 um, this is my life much to my wife's. No, no, she's quite happy I'm out of the house. Um, anyway, so Young Rewired State, Young US State, oh, please, please, if you know kids, 
We've still got space. We want as many kids as possible. We want to get them coding. We want them get them looking at real world problems. And we, know, we want to generate the next Zuckerberg and we'd like to keep him in this country. That's one of our aims. We're not losing these kids to San Francisco. We want to keep them here. We want to find them jobs and we want them making this a better country, which is what <laughs> we're about. Thank you. And let's big it up for Neil Seaford, Young Rewired State. Tweet your wish list, Neil. People running Cambridge want to know. Ah, wish list. Wish list. Now, talking of wish lists, uh, we're going to have another speaker in a moment. Deadline, what, deadline for kids? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, not at this moment in time. Oh, so, no. But has a deadline for developers? You your event, has, I've got to has a deadline for developers passed? Developers. People, sorry, uh, adults, mentors. No, no, mentors can sign up as yeah. well. We're still looking for some centres. It really is, if, if you just go online and find some of the videos from last year, or if you look at Learning Without Frontiers, there was a demonstration there, children talking, it, it's just, uh, I, I, sorry if you've heard this story. A few years, three years ago, uh, parents evening, so I'm a teacher, a year eight pupil, so a 13 year old boy, his parents came and sat in front of me at parents evening, and they said, um, how's Jonathan doing? So I looked and I said, Jonathan's doing really well. Um, on his last test, he got 98%, which wasn't bad, but in a test before he got 100%. Uh, he's, he can get A's and A's and A's and A's for everything. So I'm really, really pleased. And then there was an awkward silence. And they said, has Jonathan been telling you what he's been doing on his computer? And I went, he's not been looking at pictures of stuff and videos and stuff online, has he? No, 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 no. Has he not mentioned the PayPal thing? Like, what happened with PayPal? Oh, no. <laughs> Don't tell me, he got your credit card and he started buying stuff and spent thousands. No, no, no. And, and the, the mother reached in her bag and she pulled out one, two, three PayPal statements from when he was 10 years old. First one said 11,000 pounds, second one said 13,000 pounds, and the third one said 18,000 pounds. By the time he was 13, he'd made 18,000 pounds just in that one year, plus all the others. He lives on a farm. Mum and dad are farmers, his brother and sister love animals, he hates cows, he says they stink, he doesn't like drinking milk, so he's taught himself how to code in his bedroom. They said, we don't really think he's getting a lot from his ICT lessons. <laughs> <laughs> no kidding. Now earlier this evening I asked you to fill in some post-it notes with the kind of things you wanted from this evening, and I've just gone and picked up a sample. Leo White, he said he wanted some beer. Leo, <laughs> have you got a beer? That's a can of Coke. You sat in the wrong place, you need to be over there. Raspberry Jam is about making dreams come true, okay? <laughs> um, somebody's interested in robotics, and they've done a squiggle at the bottom that looks like an E. Ooh, you can't read it, it's yeah, it, it, yeah, it's you, <laughs> okay? Um, talk to me, there's a, there's a fantastic project that's gonna be announced soon where you've got this sort of robotic interface that sits right on top of a Raspberry Pi board. Whoa, are you okay? <laughs> Did it give a little bit more than you wanted? And this board sits on top, it's got inputs and outputs and relays and all that sort of stuff. Perfect for, just imagine a robot that costs you 40 pounds for, for all the control part of it. You can leave it in a tree, in a lake, in a field, you can do whatever you want with it. And if somebody runs over it in a truck, it's gonna cost you 40 quid for another one. Um, some <laughs> somebody wants to a chance to teach disengaged kids programming. Oh, oh, oh hang on, it's pointing in. The, is that you by any chance? EBD thirty five. Yeah. Are you starting to see any chances at the moment? How you could use Raspberry Pi to? You're here. So Mary wants to know at some point during this evening. Go over and tell her how can she teach disengaged children's programming. So like the the boy I mentioned, Jonathan. He wasn't getting anything of ICT lessons. How could the Raspberry Pi help him? Go and tell Mary when you get a chance. What else? We had somebody, when, when do you want the next event to happen? Mark S has said tomorrow. <laughs> Where's Mark? Okay, well, Mark, courtesy of the Guardian, I'm still in London till half past eight tomorrow. So let's get a table. You buy the wine, I'll buy the pizza, and we, we'll have our own little jam somewhere. That wasn't a date, I'm married by the way, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I've got kids, okay. But I like pizza and I like wine. Um, and Keith Dunlop, 
He says he's come here because he wants to demonstrate Riscos and Raspberry Pi. Would you like to do that now, Keith? Tell you what, let's do it. Okay, great. Woo! Show it up for Keith, okay? <laughs> You have to wear the medallion. Oh, I do have to wear the medallion. Okay. And like me, you've got long hair and it just tangles up in your hair. And oh, I know, it's terrible. <laughs> right, um, this is probably not going to work, but uh, what we're actually going to do is um, grab a Raspberry Pi, which is over here, and relevant bits of hardware with cables and things like that, and stick them on here. Oh, I found a keyboard, that might help. What we're going to demonstrate is an alternative operating system that does. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put myself down for a minute and then do very complicated hardware things, which um, I'm sure is going to make you all sweat quite a lot. And uh, so bear with me for about a couple of minutes and then we'll be all right. Came out on was a thing called Nacon Archimedes, which is 25 years ago. And system that ran on it. And what was ARM originally? What was well, yes, ARM. You'd call it Acorn's Risk Machine, depending on how you interpreted it. So, particular operation, the ARM architecture. Um, these days, it uh, runs on an awful lot of different ARM platforms. It runs on the Texas Instruments, OMAP 3s, the OMAP 4s, and it runs on the Raspberry Pi. Now the reason for the Raspberry Pi is that there are people who work for Broadcom who are very familiar in the RISC-OS community. So, oh yeah, we know who they are. And, um, historically, um, Acorn used to sell an awful lot of computers into schools. Um, so obviously the, the, the education link has been there since the mid to late 80s. Well, since the early 80s, I mean, the first computer I can remember in my school in 1984, yes, you're allowed to take the mickey of how old I am as well, um, was a BBC Model B. Of course, that was just what happened in the UK. So, because of the push to the education and the Raspberry Pi, then obviously it made sense to get RiskOS running. Now, RiskOS is this version of RiskOS, even for the developers, with alpha release. You probably see the screen tearing on the screen and all sorts of other stuff. Even Let me switch it back on again. There we go. Bloody mouse. Right. What I'm going to do is just sort of talk you through the operating system um, very, very quickly. Um, then I'm going to enter a thing called the task window. It's the equivalent of a terminal on those horrible other alien operating systems that were never really designed to natively run on ARM. Not that I'm biased. <laughs> Right. First thing, obviously, is this big grey bar along the bottom. Uh, that's always been there. Uh, you'll be familiar with it on almost every other kind of operating system. This one did it first. And like an operating system. Now, um, if you missing about it. Day one, the people that designed RiskOS realized when you're holding a mouse, you've got three fingers free. So, you use your middle finger. Load things. The other one, like for instance, multiple selects, just like that. Note. You've got a mouse, you might as well use it to the best of its abilities. So that's this version, the operating system, is actually um, an open source variety. It's the license it's released under is a thing called a shared license. Uh, the idea being that if you're using it just within the community, blah, 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 you're not trying to make any money out of it, you just use it. But if you are a company that wants to sell a product that's got the operating system in it, then you have to pay the exorbitant license fees of 20 quid. Right. Oh, I've, I've not configured the network on here because the, we need um, 
because of the alpha state of the operating system, we actually need a wired network connection. Um, but the website to get um, the operating system from is a very difficult. It's called riscosopen.org. If you just put in riscos, it's about the second entry into Google. Third entry, sorry. Um, right, well, let's... Yes, we still have commercial software. This is about the most powerful vector drawing package that exists in the world. Um, and these are, any of you that do remember RiskOS from many years ago, and the one person that does has just walked away, and I'm going to go walk around here and go come here. Look, watch this. You remember this? Yeah. Right, you ready? I'm back. I know, I know you're not, but we've talked. This is a, this is a, the artworks demonstrations, um, the, this, this, that's a vector image, um, and they're well known um, for being, you know, sort of a demonstration of how quick these things really are, because the OS is, oh yeah, <laughs> the operating system's huge, it's six megabytes. Um, in fact, there's been arguments in the community recently about going above the four limit. Yeah, that's, and that's also the other thing is that in yes, um, in older well older machines, um, the operating system's actually in a ROM or an E squared or something like that. Obviously, on a Raspberry Pi or a Panda board or a Beagle board or something like that, there is a part of the SD card cunningly hidden from this user, so I don't delete it, um, which contains the operating system. Yeah, all six meg of it. Right, those of you that do remember this demonstration. It's quite quick, isn't it? And this is only a 700 megahertz machine. Yeah, I struggle on this 600. Yeah, <laughs> oh, well, all the 500 makes a difference. You should see what it's like at 1.5 gig, mate. It's amazing. Um, so, there I mean, obviously, you can see there's quite a lot of tearing going on the screen and things like that. That's because um, RiscOS's mouse is actually <laughs> hardware embedded. Um, and one of the things that delayed the, the Raspberry Pi port was uh, the USB. Um, because the Raspberry Pi has a rather interesting way of doing USB, he says being diplomatic, um, in that because the, the age of the system on a chip, um, it doesn't have the normal OHCI and EHCI controllers. So you actually have to implement an awful lot of the USB in software. Those of you that have looked at some of the Raspberry Pi Linux forums will have seen that there's um, the driver that uh, the Raspberry Pi organization are using for their Linux distribution is, is pr producing quite serious processor overload. We think it's happening as well, but I mean, uh, we'll get it sorted out. Well then, I've had enough of doing demonstrations and things like that. It's, you know, you can do, it's, an, it's a computer. Yeah, you know, it's like a little desktop computer, but it's a Raspberry Pi, but it's a desktop computer, but it's a Raspberry Pi. But that's a bit boring when we've got all these I'm now going to ask people to remember something else. When I get the button right. Right. It's called the task window. It's RiscOS's version of the command line. I can't stand being at the command line. I've got, a, I've got a keyboard, I've got a mouse. Why the hell should I have to be typing things in to tell the computer what to do? However, for the purpose of typing these little letters, talking about the Russian Pi, this is about 12 months ago, and he said, we really need a copy of Spill. Full stop. End of story. Any questions? Woo! <laughs> <laughs> well, that's an odd question, but leave it there. Can we, can we Sorry? Can medallion, please? You, oh, really? <laughs> Oh, yeah, sorry, I should have mentioned this. It will be uh, a fully stable release in time for the educational release in September.
Well, no, it's going to have to happen. If it doesn't happen, then Hedgehog's world is quite simple. I didn't think the head teachers were that interested, really, to tell you the truth. But didn't they? I don't know. I was, I was looking at one around here somewhere. Did anybody yeah. else see a teacher that was interested? I think there's yeah. another one in green trousers over yeah. there. <laughs> now, we're going to have another talk in a moment, but um, somebody said this is Alan's gig, and it said it's not. This is your gig. This is all about you. You are the people who make London Raspberry Jam. I don't even live in London. I live about 250 miles away. This is a special thing for me. I won't be here at the next one. Boo-hoo-hoo. -hoo. But I hope that you will all be here for the next one. Um, some of you filled in some post-it notes. John Davies. Is that right? Davies? Yeah, Davis. Davis. Oh, sorry, John. John wants to know. Can you see John? John's over here with a... Where did you find the Guinness? Nobody told me there was Guinness here. <laughs> oh. I, I'm going to have another drink of Guinness when Ireland have beat, won in the Euros. I'm just, <laughs> uh, okay. So John wants to know if anybody's got the same problems as he has with the Raspberry Pi. And he wants to see what people are doing. So when we finish in about 15 minutes, we finish the talks, please go and talk to John and find out, please, because we need to fix whatever his problems are. Okay. Oh, he's, over, he's got a machine as well, so come and see him. Um, we also have, I think it's Alex Z. Oh, hello, 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 Alex. That's a lot of L's in it. <laughs> to see, Alex wants to see what other people are doing with their Raspberry Pis. So if you've got one and you're doing stuff, Alex, just wave again, okay? Alex has got mo much, much more hair than I have. He's got lots of it here and here and some at the sides as well, okay, just to show off. Simon Neal. Simon Neal has sent me about 20 emails trying to get a ticket to come here tonight. I bet you wish you hadn't bothered now. <laughs> Simon wants, he says he's heard about the Raspberry Pi a couple of months ago, yeah. and he's, which creates excitement about how to engage with my kids yeah. and his kids in how to write and not just read. So Simon's got a notepad, uh, post-it notes. He wants to find out lots of stuff. So go and find Simon at some point. Martin B. Who's Martin B? Hello, Martin. Martin wants these things to happen every month. So, Martin, you're the guy. Okay? Say hello to Ryan and Cyber and all the others, and you set it up. People will come. If you build it, they will come. <laughs> I heard that in a film once. And somebody who's not put their name on says they're not sure what they want, but they're quite interested in regular meets where people can share what they're doing with their pie, get ideas to help them, etc., Come and talk to Martin B and he'll make that happen. Okay, now, some of our sponsors tonight, they've paid for all your Coke and Fanta and all those kind of things, but not the scones. They, ha they are doing lots of things that don't involve Raspberry Pis at the moment because there just aren't enough Raspberry Pis to go around. So they've put together lots of things that are gonna happen this summer. This is the summer of code. So John Bevan, big it up for John Bevan. I, I should have said, you might know John Bevan as Bevangelist on Twitter. So if you type in Bevan, B-E-V-A-N, Jellist, that's very clever. That's, that's, that's almost as clever as techno I'm trained, teacher. I'm trained to be an RE teacher. Oh, the Evangelist RE teacher. <laughs> and now he's preaching all about coding. He's spreading the good news about Thimble. So he's going to talk to us about a product called Thimble, which has only just in the last couple of days sort of become public. And it launched on Monday. Now, I have to say, it's nothing at all at the moment to do with Raspberry Pi. But you're going to get this at a Raspberry Jam, because just like when I used to take my saxophone to play it in church, you sometimes get people to bring things along, and then people go, whoa, a saxophone in church? I've never heard, had that before. And um, John is going to talk to us about Thimble. Any second. Yeah. Now... Okay, when I was uh, 11 years old, I had in school with them BBCBs. Anybody here have one of them? Oh, quite a few of you. I could, my parents couldn't afford one, so they bought me a ZX Spectrum. What Steve? No, 1983, yeah. And Steve Ferber, he refers it to as, as the rectum. <laughs> he, he would do, because he's made quite a lot of money out of the, uh, the BBC Micro. And, um, I wanted to find out about how to program it. And one of the things I did was I went to, in Preston, we had what was called PACE, Preston Atari Computer Enthusiasts. They met once a month, and there was lots of people with Ataris, 400s, 800s, 1200s, you name it, they had every kind of Atari. And 
unfortunately for me, it was mainly men with beards and sandals and t-shirts, no stereotypes there. And when I told my mum I was hanging around with a bunch of 40 year olds who were like showing me lots of cool stuff, she starts to get a bit worried. This was before we had things like CRB checks. So the idea with a Raspberry Jam is that they are open to anybody of all ages. Oh, hello, how old are you? Welcome to Raspberry Jam. Okay, you need to carry the torch for Raspberry Jam. We've got somebody else who's. Uh... Um, I'm twelve. Oh, can we go any younger than twelve? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I... Yeah, 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 yeah. The... I get a little bit upset when people send me emails saying, "Can I bring my son? Can I bring my daughter along to a Raspberry Jam?" Yes, of course. I'm a teacher. That's what my job is all about: trying to teach children how to code. And um, maybe we could teach some of these adults how to do it as well. <laughs> Is there anybody who'd like to come up and take the mic for a minute? We're ready. Oh, We're ready. would you like We're to take ready. the mic for a minute? Take the medallion as well. I promise we're going to finish in about 10 minutes talks and then you can go and mingle and do stuff. Cool. Well, I was going to ask for a volunteer from the audience, but now because we're using Ryan's laptop, he can be our, our volunteer. Um, it launched on Monday. It's a tool to get people tinkering and playing with the web. So you can take people from absolutely zero level of uh, knowledge through to publishing on the web in a matter of minutes. So what we'll do now is by way of a demonstration, you'll probably struggle to see at the back because it, we're gonna do a little bit of code um, on the left hand plane in a second. So if you want to gather around, if you're interested, if not, grab me later on and we can have a chat. But uh, if Ryan scrolls down a little bit on this page until we get to, sorry, back up, just click on Thimble at the top there. <coughs> and then scroll down to get started. Pick a project. <coughs> and then scroll down until we get to the make a meme project is one of the really simple ones to get people started that's the one and then so this is Thimble uh, they're all laid out around this same format where you've got the left hand pane is commented HTML and CSS and then on the right it's rendered live as you type so this is a bit of you know training wheels you're not starting with a completely <coughs> blank sheet of paper you've got something to get yourself uh, get started with. So for more confident or older learners, they can read through the commented code and follow it. Or if we've had, we've tested this with Coda Dojo with uh, children as young as five or six. And it will, I'll talk you through something that's, you know, we can do with kids that age. Actually, if you turn the hints off, just so they don't get in the way of, uh, act or it's disappeared now, that's it. So, for an example, let's make a web page for tonight. So, if Ryan goes to the Raspberry Pi Eventbrite page and then copy location for that image, go back into Thimble, and then here's an image of that and pastes in the image from the Eventbrite page. There it appears straight away. If he scrolls down in the head. to that.
page that you've moved, if you were talking about change, you know, turning from just reading to writing or consuming to creating, this is a tool that can get you doing it in however long we've just taken, five minutes, mm -hmm. something like that. So, and this is a suite, one of a suite of tools that we're building uh, underneath the web maker tools. So we've got Thimble that's just launched. There's Popcorn Maker, which is for editing video and making responsive web pages that sit around video. Axorus, um, wow. So come and have a chat. This is a big area of focus for Mozilla going forward. And uh, we, we'd love to get Boots Gecko running on a Raspberry Pi love to get a browser running on a Raspberry Pi we can get consuming the web. So yeah, that's it. <laughs> Your, uh, Big it up for medallion. Oh, medallion yeah, man. Sorry. John Bevan. I'm sorry, you're going to have to do better than that because he was the first speaker. I didn't have to say you've got one minute left. Oh, well, I'm, <laughs> I'm usually the bad guy at Hack Day saying, you've got 90 seconds to do okay. everything. Now, um, we've got four minutes left. Now, in these next four minutes, I, just, I want to give you some ideas about what might happen next. We had a big board over there about what should happen after tonight. My plan is to say at half past nine, OK, everybody, come on, let's pick up your Raspberry Pis. Oh, some of you haven't gotten them yet. Yeah. Okay. Well, when I say pick up your Raspberry Pis, please only pick one up if it belongs to you. <laughs> Tomas wants to share something with him. He's just gone out, so I've recorded a quick audio boo with him in the corridor. He's found a way of making your Raspberry Pi go wireless. Um, but I noticed the way when, I, when he said he had to go, he unzipped his bag, he looked in it, he looked, checked in the pocket, he reached, yes, he still had it, and zipped it back in again. What kind of people does he think that we are? So, um, from nine o'clock till half past nine, please don't leave. Please stay here for at least 15 or 20 minutes. I'm gonna to talk to you about something in a minute. But for those 15 or 20 minutes, now we have breakout spaces. Now, we, the way we can move forward is we can just say, all those in favor of another one of these, say aye. Aye. All right, so we need to, Martin. Yeah. You need to get your diary out and you need to go and speak to Ryan. Ryan, just give you a shout again. Ryan. Hello. Hello, Ryan. Get your diary out. Go and speak to Ryan and then work out what works well for you. It could be the same night in exactly. You look like you're changing your mind. We'll talk, no, we'll talk about it. Exchange emails and all that. And I'll still do a little bit to help Martin publicize it and make people aware of it and all the rest. But I won't. I cannot make the next one unless it's tomorrow. <laughs> and. Um, but some people might be thinking, Ooh, let's, let's have a, raspberry, a shortage raspberry jam, or let's have a um, southeast uh, raspberry jam. Uh, Carlos, where is, hello, Carlos. This all happened, you know, because of this guy over here. Carlos said, let's have a London raspberry jam. North London? Yeah. <laughs> but, but I think Carlos is saying he's happy to go central, yeah, for the moment. <laughs> deal with the crowd but if we start if it starts getting so big one thing you could do if you just want to go and talk to somebody like if you want to find out what this guy's problems are talk to him over here but find a quiet corner there is lots of breakout rooms around the space now before we we break it up we've got two minutes left I'm gonna go with my roving mic sorry camera I don't think you're gonna catch me this time and I'm gonna go and speak to Rosie now I didn't warn Rosie so I'm just warning Rosie at the moment Rosie is somebody who comes to this space often to work this is a fantastic space and Rosie in a moment is gonna just I'm sorry somebody said you like to talk <laughs> oh should I come over to, okay Rosie 30 seconds what's so great about this space Rosie made the scones by the way <laughs> and brought the raspberry jam. What, what do you come and do here? Yeah. Oh, well, I generally just come in here to work. It's um, just a really nice, friendly space. And primarily I come here because actually the people are really good. You always meet someone really, really good here. And the Cyberdees, who doesn't like that barriers, <laughs> who is always really, really, really helpful. <laughs> uh, so I'm beer, and unfortunately there's no beer in the scones. I'm sorry, but 
teachers about and I just couldn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you and just thank you very much for having this space. And you've got 5% battery left.